in the second half of this two-part episode of Design Cup Build, we're building Juan Ibarra, previously seen on the TV show Gold Rush, a water tank so he can put his Torchmate 4800 in a trailer and cut on the go. We're halfway through the build and we've got quite a bit more to go. Oh, How do you have to make it nice? Let's get ready to design, cut, and build. Hello and welcome back to this two-part episode of Design Cup Build. We are halfway through building Juan his water tank for his Torchmate 4800. So let's quickly recap on what we've done so far. We sketched our designs, cut the top and bottom, broke the sides, messed one of them up, created a tool to fix it, tacked the corners, filled the seams, made a joke about dirt bikes, cut a nested batch of parts, went fishing, spelled sham wow, nearly broke the gantry, cut a second batch of parts, cleaned them up, played the triangle, Plunge showed up, we welded the baffles, hugged the tank, grinded the corners, did some measuring, screwed up the math, said who cares, arranged the baffles, had a race, and here we are. Does that about cover it, Iggy? Uh, yeah, I think that about covers it. <laughs> Excellent, we've got a lot more where that came from, so let's get started. Again. When we left off last time, Iggy and Juan had just finished welding the supports in the tank, and now we wanted to see how it would look like with the top on. Yeah. Nice and sleek like a tank. I love it, dude. So we'll have that guy should go right over that. This guy should go right over that one. Nice. Oh, before we do anything, we should probably check these corners. That's right, water test. Let me we go get, get slide, some. We're gonna slide this Yeah, over. we'll slide it down. Let me, I'm gonna go get some bubbly water and an air gun. Be right back. I Looks like, like we got a little sag in the middle. Yeah, it's not bad though, huh? Uh, dab up some brackets real quick or just leave it? I mean, it's gonna be pressurized to some degree anyway. Yeah, it's gonna, so. it's gonna bulge back out. I think it's gonna be fine. I think that one's good. Good. So <laughs> we might get some pinholes on the top, but the nice thing is, is what we'll do is we can actually plug all four. We'll have an incoming air and we'll plug that guy and that guy with no water in it and then we can come in and just do the bubble test again. Okay, the plan is set. First, we're going to tack the top onto the bottom of the tank. Second, we're going to grind down the bungs. Third, we're gonna tack weld the bungs in the holes. Fourth, we're gonna seam weld everything nice and tight. Fifth, we're gonna weld the top to the tank supports. And sixth, we'll pressurize the tank and do a second round of testing with the soapy water. And hopefully with all that welding, the tank will be airtight. So one's tacking the top of our tank on, and we notice that the sides are quite warped, most likely from welding those tabs on. So he came up with a really nice hack and took a pipe, tacked it to the side of the tank, and then was able to pry that to exactly where we need it. He then tacked the top of the tank to the side, and then he's able to wrench the bar off and then rinse and repeat until we're finished with the tank. So these bungs are actually made for pipe. So what I did was I just cut the bevel out of them, made them flat, that way I can put them up against the tank and weld them. As we were working, Juan mentioned he might want a heating element and possibly circulation in the tank, and we didn't account for that in the original design. So we cut some holes in the side to give him the option down the road. So naturally, we made the guy with the bad eyes cut the circle. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's dreadful. Diaphragm pump, I was gonna go to a sediment filter and then circulate back in.
Iggy's fantastic and so is Juan. So watching their two styles go head to head, I could learn a lot from those two. Having Juan here at the shop was a great addition to the show. He kind of knew exactly what he was looking for in the first place and uh, it worked out really well. Then where the welder's gonna sit, you're gonna do the two right there? Yep. Before we pressurize the tank, let's take a moment to discuss the fittings and how this whole thing is gonna work together. This guy right here is a short version of what we already welded into the table. This just was a 10 inch piece of black iron pipe, one inch uh, ID. So we cut it down to about five and a half inches and then set it off the bottom of the table about a half of an inch. So that way when the water goes in, when we pressurize it, it'll go up the pipe into the table. From here, we then got a one to one, one inch to one inch. So we'll be able to screw that to the top. And then we got a one inch to three quarters, little like puzzle, jigsaw puzzle we got going. And then a three quarters to three quarter nipple. And this is just a uh, water heater supply line three quarter fitting, it'll screw right onto here, and then the top side will go right into the hose bib on the other side. Scale. It's like we've done that before. Done it once or twice. If you look right here, we've actually got a sud because we've got a little pinhole. So if with the soapy water, you can actually see it's blowing and creating bubbles. So that's what we're finding. Only a few leaks, not too shabby. With the tank passing our inspection, let's pivot to the table skirts and doors that will surround the 4800. Just in case you were wondering, the skirts are going to be hanging off the lip of the channel inside the 4800. Hold on, Aaron. For those of you at home that are gonna be building this project, please don't alter your table. We don't want you to void your warranty. On the other side, what is it going to say on the other door? It'll say Forge Mate 4800 and the Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Now, these guys will go straight to the bottom. You can line them up directly with the bottom edge. But this guy right here will offset. It should offset about 3 eighths of an inch, if I remember correctly. So that way, when the doors close, it stops directly on this guy. So without going all the way through. These just sit like that. Yes, yeah, so then when the bolt comes out, it's awesome. You can take them apart and it'll go right back in. Yeah. Boom. Fits like a glove. So Jose did a phenomenal job painting this project for us, but there's still an important part left on this build. Installation. Oh, the negotiator? Yeah, I like it's <laughs> uh, great, guys. While I push this out, you can see the top. I push this out a little bit. I love it. There you go. What a project it was. But now Juan can take his trailer anywhere on the go and cut right there on the spot. Having a table like this in a trailer, mobile, it's going to be a huge thing for us. It's, it's a game changer. There's many times when I spend half the day or even the full day cutting out brackets and cutting out pieces by hand. And to be able to do that in a fraction of the time with a table like this, it's going to be really a, a time saver and a game changer for us. This project was so much fun, and I'm so glad we were able to bring Juan in. Maybe we can bring him in again sometime. 
But in the meantime, we designed it, we cut it, and we built it. See you next time. To learn more about Lincoln Electric's line of plasma cutting tables, please visit torchmate.com.